So I'm gonna quit out of this and then we can create the, the source folder. So if we list everything, we can see that we have the node module, package.json, package.lag.json. So we don't have anything else. So let's do mkdir and src. So usually src is what you would call where you're gonna put all your source file. And now if we list everything, you can see we have the SRC. So I can go inside of this SRC folder and then uh, create the new file. So I can do vim index.js. So I'm just gonna open it in vim as well as I create it. So now we're inside the index.js. So the first thing I wanna do is to import express. So I'm gonna do ex import express and that's supposed to come from the express library that we just added. So express, and then I wanna import the IP. So import IP from, also coming from the library that we just installed, so IP. And then I wanna import the .env, so import .env, and that's supposed to come from .env. And then I wanna import course, so let's do course from, and also of course course. And that's all that I'm gonna import for now. Now what I wanna do is to call the .env.config. So what this is gonna do is just gonna load every configuration that we have or any environment configuration that we have. And then I'm gonna create another variable. I'm gonna call it port. So this is gonna be the port on which the server is gonna be running. And this port, I can get it two ways. I can get it from the process so if I set the port. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use this in a second. So I can do process. That env and then I can access any variable that I need. I can just come up with a name. So I'm gonna come up with server port. So we're gonna get that server port, as you can see here, the port is gonna be some server port variable that is defined in the environment or inside of the process environment. And then if I don't get anything, I'm gonna set it to, let's say 3000, okay? So 3000, if we don't have the server port variable defined on the environment, but if we do have it, we won't be using the um, 3000, we're just gonna use the server port, whatever the value is for that. And then the next thing I wanna do is to create our application. So I'm gonna do const app and then set this equal to express as a function. So open and close curly braces. And then I'm gonna set up some middleware. So I'm gonna do app.use. And that's how you add middleware to your application. And I wanted to use course. So I'm gonna pass in course. Also pass another configuration in there. What I'm gonna do is to allow every application to be able to call this application, which is something you probably shouldn't do. So inside of this, you can pass some configuration as an object. I'm just gonna put origin and then set it to all. And for that, I'm just gonna put an asterisk. So that means that every application can send any request to this backend application. It's just gonna allow it to go through. Now this is a back practice, but you know, this is just a tutorial. That would be just fine. But in your case, you would probably have an array of strings and those strings would be the URL that you wanna allow on your application. And then you just would pass them here as part of the configuration that you can pass to the course library here. And the next middle whether I wanna add, so app that use, is to make sure that I'm working with JSON. So I'm gonna do express and then call the JSON function and then close that. So that means that whenever I'm sending any response back to the front end, it's gonna be in JSON format. And let's add our initial route. So I'm gonna put app that get. So this is gonna accept the get request. And what I wanna do here is to just accept anything on forward slash. So I'm gonna put forward slash and then we're gonna accept the request and the response. So in here, I'm gonna do request and then response. And then we have a callback function here. Callback function. And then in there, we can put whatever code that we want. So what I wanna do is to just send a quick response. So the response that I get, and then I'm gonna send something. So I'm gonna do send and then pass in some object here. And I'm just gonna pass in a message. So message, and then I'm gonna say up just so that we know that the server is running. So we're just gonna say up and we're gonna send it as JSON. So we need to enclose this inside of curly braces. So I'm gonna put two curly braces here. So now we're gonna send this message that says it's up. If we don't get this message, then we know that the server is not running. So whenever we go to that port on my local computer, which is running on, as you can see up there, 192, 168, 1248, then it should give us this up message. And then the last thing I wanna do is to listen. So we're gonna say app listen, and then we want to listen on that port. So we're gonna pass in the port. And after the port, we can call a callback function. So let's call this callback function here. And then I'm just gonna say console.log and then pass in a message. And the message that I wanna pass here, uh, I'm gonna actually pass back tick in here. I want to say that the server is running on you know this IP address and this port. So I'm gonna do server running 
on and then access the IP address. And to do this, I'm just gonna put a template literal. So dollar sign, open and close curly braces. And then in here, I can just say IP that address. And that's gonna give me the IP address of the computer. And then I'm gonna pass in the port. So I'm gonna put a colon and then do the same thing again. So dollar sign, open and close curly braces, and then pass in the variable port. So that's gonna form the domain for us, which is gonna be my IP address along with my port or the port that the application is running on. So that's why I wanted to use the IP, but we don't really need it. You can just say it's running on, you know, so-and-so port, as long as you know how to access it or what the domain is supposed to be. So with all of this in place, we should be able to spin up the server and see it in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and save all this and then open a terminal right here. And I'm just gonna go back to the root of the application. So the Node.js API. And then I should be able to do npm run. And then we want to start the uh, dev. So we're going to say start dev. And I'm going to press enter. And as you can see that the application is already running. And we don't have any errors. So another thing I want to do is to show you this uh, environment variable in action. Because we're going to be talking about it a little bit more in the, in the course. Cancel out of this. And I'm just going to close this as well. So I'm going to go right here. And then do, uh, actually I want to do console.log. And I want to log the process.env. So I'm going to say process.env. So that's going to show us all of the um, variable that we have defined on the process.env, which is a bunch of environment variable. I'm going to save this. And then I'm just going to quit out of this because I want to use the whole terminal. And then let's go back to the root of the application and then do npm run start. And then we want to start the dev uh, environment and then run the application again. And you can see we have this big object. So I'm just not gonna show you everything because there might be some sensitive information in it, but you can see the node environment that we define and you can see that it's dev. So if I close out of this and quit and pass in the server port. So here, if I do server underscore port, and then say I set this equal to, let's say 5,000. Now remember, we just ran it on 3,000. And instead of dev, let's see if we can run the prod environment. So we're going to say prod and then run. Now you're going to see a significant difference because now we're passing the server port. So the first thing we notice is at the bottom now we're running on 5,000. The node environment now is prod. And you can also see the server port that we define now, it exists. When we didn't define it, then it didn't exist. It was undefined. So that's why the application picked up 3,000. Now it's gonna pick up 5,000 because we define server port. As you can see here, that's the same 5,000. And of course, the node environment that I already told you about, because this time we didn't run the dev server, but we actually ran the node server. So I'm gonna cancel that and then clear this. And then I'm gonna go back to the application again. And I want you to see what we have in terms of folder structure. So you can see now we have the package.json. This is where we have all of our dependencies. We went over this file and then we have our source folder. And inside of the source folder, that's where we have the index.js. And you can see that this is all the code that we just wrote. So we know that the application is running. We're able to see it in action. But the only thing that I didn't test is this line right here. So I didn't send a request and you didn't see the message. So let's go ahead and test that out. So save this, get back out again. And I'm just going to run it as the dev server. So that should start the server on 3000, as you can see here. So it's running on 3000. And then I'm going to open another workspace and then open my terminal here again. I'm going to zoom in a little and then we're going to send a request to my local host at this port. So I'm going to do HTTP and then go to this port, which is 3000. So when we do that, then it's just going to send a get request to localhost 3000, which is the same IP address that I have for my machine, as you can see up there. And then it's going to give us the response. So let's go ahead and give this a try. And as you can see, we get the message that says it's up. So we know that everything is working in the application and I just wanted to show you so that we can see the message that we just coded. So now we know that everything is working. So let's go back to the first workspace and I'm just gonna cancel out of this and then open the uh, editor again. And what we're gonna be doing is to define the data that we're gonna be working with. And for this, I'm just gonna be working with patients. So we're gonna imagine that we have this clinic or this hospital, and then we're gonna be managing patients. So we're gonna be creating a database, save our patients in the database, and we should be able to manipulate the data in a database.